Hi, my name is Basir. In this video, I'll be teaching you about ionic bonds and the formation of ionic bond from Chapter 8, Chemical Bonding, Class 10, Telangana State Syllabus. Let me first re recap what we have learned in the previous video. We saw that the elements on the left-hand side of the periodic table belonging to group 1A, 2A and 3A, they tend to lose electrons and form the positive ions while the elements on the right hand side of the periodic table belonging to group 5a 6a and 7a they tend to gain electrons and form the negative ions ionic bond is formed between the the ions that have been formed this way let me read out the definition for ionic bond for you it says that the ionic bond is formed between atoms of two dissimilar elements due to transfer of electrons from the atom of one element to the other it clearly says that the ionic bond can form only between two dissimilar atoms dissimilar atoms means two different atoms atoms which are not similar why can't the ionic bond happen between similar atoms see ionic bond cannot happen between sim similar atoms because let's say i have two sodium atoms let's say i have two sodium atoms now each sodium atom will tend to lose an electron to form a positive ion so both the sodium atoms will be interested only in losing an electron None of the sodium atom would be interested in gaining an electron. If one atom is interested in losing an electron, the other atom should be interested in gaining that electron. Only then the ionic bond can happen, right? So that's the reason it says that the ionic bond can happen only between two dissimilar at atoms. So ionic bond happens by the transfer of electron between two dissimilar atoms from one atom to the other atom the electron transfer takes place so the bond that forms due to transfer of electrons is known as an ionic bond ionic bond mostly happens between highly reactive metals we see that the elements on the left hand side of the periodic table belonging to group 1a 2a 3a are metals and the elements on the right hand side of the periodic table are mostly non-metals so in metals group 1a elements are highly reactive and in non-metals group 7a elements are highly reactive so ionic bond mostly takes place between elements belonging to group 1a and elements belonging to group 7a let's see here it says the same thing it says between reactive metals like alkali metal alkali metal is nothing but 1a group 1a group is known is called as alkali metals and highly reactive non-metals like halogens group 7a elements are known as halogens now let us learn about the actual formation of ionic bond we'll go through a lot of examples of ionic bond so if you don't get the first example uh, don't just quit <laughs> don't be a quitter i really want you to stick with me uh, through the rest of this video and i assure you you'll be able to understand every bit of what i'm talking right formation of ionic bond as this bond is formed between charged particles known as ions it is called as ionic bond it's pretty simple it is given the name ionic bond because the bond is between the charged particles so these are the charged particles here these are the positive charged particles and this these are the negative charged particles so since this this bond which is the ionic bond takes place between charged particles known as ions it is known as ionic bond ionic bond is also known as electrostatic bond because the force of attraction between the ions is nothing but the electrostatic force that's the reason based on the force it is known as it is it, it is also known as electrostatic bond sometimes based on the forces being electrostatic the bond is also called as electrostatic bond ionic bond is also known as electrovalent bond so there are actually three names for the ionic bond one you call it the ionic bond you also call it as electrostatic bond you also call it as the electrovalent bond you call it ionic bond because the bond formation is happening between charged particles known as ions you call it electrostatic bond because the force of attraction between the charged particles is the electrostatic force if you watched my previous video you'll be able to understand this valence concept uh, in, in the previous video we learned about the electronic theory of valence by lewis and Cossel. right in that we saw that the elements on the left side of the periodic table tend to lose the electrons to form positive ions and the elements on the right hand side of the periodic table they tend to gain electrons 
uh, and become the negative ions. So since the valence con concept has been explained in terms of electrons, we are talking about electrons being lost and being gained, right? So since the valence concept has been explained in terms of electrons, we also call it as electrovalent bond. Let us look at our first example of ionic bond formation. Formation of sodium chloride NaCl. Sodium atomic number 11, it tends to lose one electron, right? This is how we write the chemical equation for an atom which is losing the electron. If an atom is losing the electron, we don't write minus electron here. In chemistry, what we do is uh, basically in chemical equation, we write the electron on the right hand side. If the electron is on the right hand side, it ideally means that sodium has lost an electron. Let me be a little clear with you by writing down this equation on a piece of paper here. Sodium, atomic number 11, electronic configuration is 2, 8, 1. Sodium belonging to 1A group, it has one valence electron and it tends to lose the one valence electron. After it loses the one valence electrons, electron, we can depict this in a chemical equation like this. Sodium, which is a solid, it loses one electron. We don't write it like this. Lost one electron, minus one electron, and it became a positive ion. We don't write it like this. Instead of writing minus electron here, we take it to the right hand side and we write plus electron. You can understand it in this way. In chemical equations, we don't subtract electron from the left hand side. We add the electron to the right hand side. So if the electron is added to the right hand side, you have to understand that the sodium, which is on the left hand side, it has lost one electron. After it lost one electron, it became a unipositive ion. Positive ion is known as cation. Now we are going to learn about anion formation. Anion is nothing but the negative ion. The positive ion is known as cation and the negative ion is known as anion. Chlorine, it gained one electron. It is gaining the electron, so I am adding electron on the left hand side. If it, if it would have lost the electron, I would have added electron on the right hand side. If electron is added on the right hand side, you have to understand this way. If a, a electron is added to the right hand side, you have to understand that sodium lost an electron. If here electron is added on the left hand side, so it means that chlorine is gaining an electron. So after chlorine gains an electron, it becomes a negative ion. The positive ion Na plus and the negative ion Cl minus, they both combine and then they become NaCl. Now this NaCl ionic compound that they form, this is neutral because it has it has the same positive charge and the same negative charge. It has the same amount of positive charge and the same amount of negative charge. Both of them cancel out and we get a neutral ionic compound. The next example here in the list is magnesium chloride. Magnesium is combining with two chlorine atoms. One magnesium atom is combining with two chlorine atoms. So Mg plus Cl2 gives Mg Cl2. Let us see the electronic configuration of magnesium and let us see the electronic configuration of chlorine. We will see the cation formation and the anion formation. And once again cation is nothing but the positive ion, anion is nothing but the negative ion. What do you understand from this equation? Magnesium lost two electrons and it became a dipositive ion. We can see here the electronic configuration of magnesium is 282. Magnesium atomic number is 12 so it has 12 electrons. It loses these two valence electrons and it becomes dipositive ion. But how is magnesium able to combine with two chlorine atoms in the first place? We see that magnesium is losing two electrons and one electron is being received by each of the chlorine atom. So magnesium lost two electrons one of the chlorine atom gained one electron and the other chlorine atom gained the other electron and that is how magnesium is able to combine with two chlorine atoms right let us now see the formation of disodium monoxide na2o sodium we know that the electronic configuration of sodium is 281 it loses one electron and then the electronic configuration become 2,8 so 
one sodium atom loses one electron to become a unipositive ion. Here two sodium atoms are going to lose two electrons. Obviously one sodium atom loses one electron and then the other sodium atom loses one more electron. So two sodium atoms are losing how many electrons? Two electrons. So that is what is written in this equation here. Two sodium atoms are losing two electrons to become unipositive ions to become two unipositive ions that's a cation formation cation is nothing but the positive ion let us now see the anion formation oxygen oxygen atomic number is 2 comma 6 oxygen it gains two electrons and then 6 plus 2 is how much 8 so oxygen is gaining two electrons and it and it is becoming di negative ion oxygen is gaining two electrons but where is the oxygen getting those electrons from oxygen is getting those electrons from the sodium atoms how many sodium atoms do we have two sodium atoms we have two sodium atoms each sodium atom is losing one electron so this sodium atom is losing one electron the other sodium atom is losing one electron and how many electrons they lost in total they lost two electrons and those two electrons are being gained by oxygen atom 2 Na plus 2 Na plus which is formed here it is combining with O2 minus which is which is the anion both of these combine and they become Na2O disodium oxide let us see one more example here if you are a formation of aluminium chloride aluminium atomic number 13 electronic configuration 283 aluminium loses these three electrons once it is once it loses these three electrons it is left with only 2 comma 8 so it is left with only 2 comma 8 right so aluminium from this chemical equation we see that aluminium is losing three electrons and becoming tripositive ion if aluminium is losing three electrons those three electrons should be gained by someone obviously right those three electrons that aluminium lost will be gained by some other atom let us see who is gaining the chlorine atom is gaining and we know that chlorine electronic configuration and we know that chlorine the atomic number of chlorine is 17 electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 7 chlorine it tends to gain one electron and forms the elect and get the electronic configuration 2 comma 8 comma 8 so chlorine belonging to this belonging to 7a group it tends to gain one electron and become uni negative ion so each chlorine atom will gain one electron aluminium is losing three electrons and each chlorine atom will be gaining one electron so aluminium it lost three electrons aluminium it lost three electrons it became tripositive ion each of the chlorine atom is gaining one electron what do you understand from this equation one electron is being gained by one chlorine atom in total three chlorine atoms are there three chlorine atoms will be gaining three electrons and they become and they each become uni negative ion al3 plus the cation and 3cl minus the anion they combine to form alcl3 now how do cations and anions of an ionic compound exist in a solid state i'll try to zoom this diagram as much as i can but just in case i would like you to go to page number 160 of your uh, science reader and just just to check this diagram very closely here the pink circles that you see here or the red circles that you see here represent sodium ions na plus sodium ions and the blue bigger circles that you see here represent chlorine ions chlorine ions so these right here the red ones the smaller red ones these are na plus ions and the blue ones the bigger blue ones they are cl minus ions so that is how the ions are arranged in a crystal lattice this is like a cube and each cube and this cube has about 
eight unit cells you're going to learn about unit cells and intermediate so I'm not going to talk a lot about it now because anyways you know not much information has been given about unit cell or crystal ladders in your 10th class reader so I'll, I'll just stick to your reader for now you must be knowing that light travels in all directions let's say this is bulb from the bulb the light will not travel just in one direction light will it travel just in one direction it travels in all possible directions in a straight line it travels in all possible directions right in the same way the positive charge this positive charge this na plus charge the positive charge we know that the positive charge attracts the negative charge opposite charges they attract each other right now this positive charge will not just attract this chlorine atom it will attract this chlorine atom also it will attract this chlorine atom also it will attract this chlorine atom also so na plus it the force of attraction of na plus ion is not on just one chlorine atom it is uh, it is it is just not on one chlorine ion it is on all the chlorine ions that are surrounding it let me talk a little bit about coordination number the number of ions of opposite charge that surround a given ion of given charge is known as that coordination number of that given ion confused <laughs> don't get confused i'll show you in the diagram here so this red circle that you see here this is nothing but this represents na plus ion right this is a positive ion na plus ion this na plus ion is surrounded by six cl minus ions you can see it clearly here this na plus is surrounded by one two three four five six six cl minus ions and that's the reason the coordination number of na plus ions is six in the same way the coordination number of cl minus is also six here i'll not be able to show it to you uh, because I'll have to extend this uh, crystal lattice to a little more extent here. Um, but then I would suggest you to go back to your reader, page number 160. You'll be able to see gray lines or, or light brown lines connecting this Na plus ion to the six Cl minus ions that I'm talking about. And you'll be able to see for yourself that Na plus is surrounded by six Cl minus ions. And that's the reason we say that the coordination number of Na plus is six. So we have learned about ionic bond and the formation of ionic bond. Um, these charts have been prepared by Sumaya and Mariam. Video editing is done by Faisal. We'll talk about covalent bond and the formation of covalent bond in the next video. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, goodbye.